want to talk about our liberty that we have in Christ. You know, because the, the writer of Hebrews talks about our liberty and connects that liberty to the fact that our conscience is purged from dead works. If, uh, if we go to 13 and 14, he says, For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, which who through the Holy Spirit offered himself without spot, talking about without spot of the flesh, to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serving the living God. Um, he says, talking about Jesus as the high priest, he says, um, let's see, let's go back up here. He's talking about uh, the Holy Spirit, okay, let me just go back up here a little bit further. Talking about the high priest, but into the second, or the Holy of Holies, went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and the errors of the people, or the sins of the people. The Holy Spirit, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet manifest while the first tabernacle was standing. He was talking about into the presence of God, where the mercy seat was, where the cherubim overshadowed the mercy seat, where the blood was applied. He says, which was a figure for the time then present, and which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. And he says, For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, in chapter 10, verse 1, not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect talking about the conscience as what Peter is talking about in 1 Peter 3.20 talking about Noah and eight souls being saved by water and any type of baptism which now saves us not the washing away of the filth of the flesh but the answer of a clear conscience towards God and if we go And here in chapter 9, verse 14, he says, after talking about the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of the heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, he says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot of the flesh to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serving the living God? And, you know, we got to... It was like Paul was talking about the heretic, in which is the Greek word itself in Titus three, ten and eleven, and he says, uh, "Let me go to Titus three, ten, because that's what he's talking about there. Because in Titus one fifteen he says, to the pure, all things are pure, and he's talking about meats and and." Uh, drink wine he says to to the pure all things are pure but to the defiled and the unbelieving nothing is pure but even their mind and their conscience are defiled and we need to I mean we need to see the revelation of this he says in Titus 3.10 a man that is a heretic he is talking about someone that's self-willed yeah, that is the main definition of that Greek word. To choose. 
someone who is self-willed after the first and second gentle warning reject or to turn away knowing that he that is such is subverted meaning twisted and sins or continues to sin being condemned of himself and because that goes back to what Peter said that clear conscience and the apostle Paul talking about you know those who are strong in the faith bearing the weakness of those weak in the faith and and walking charitably not walking selfishly putting stumbling blocks in front of those that are weak and then he gives an illustration of that because if in in their time and an example he gave was one who ate a meat that was offered to an idol and he ate it with thanksgiving knowing that the idol was nothing he didn't eat it with the conscience to the idol but the one who's weak in the face sees him as an emboldened to eat a meat offered to an idol and he eats it with conscience to the idol his his weak conscience is defiled he says now you walk not charitably you destroy your brother for me and i mean we need to i mean we need to really get a hold of that it's not like someone else has power or over our faith but as paul said in another place you know that you know that we should be found holy and blameless before him in love you know in We can't serve God with a defiled conscience. We can't serve God in condemnation. We've got to understand that that's what the law was. He describes the law in 2 Corinthians 3, the law of death and condemnation. He describes the covenant of Jesus Christ as the law of faith the the covenant or the ministration of righteousness and he describes it again in second uh, corinthians 3 6 for god has made us able ministers of the new covenant not of the old not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. And we got to see what he's talking about the law, because in 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty six, the sting of death is sin, and still is, and, but the strength of sin is the law. That's why he's saying in Romans 7, 6, having died to what held us, that we should serve God in newness of spirit, and not the oldness of the letter. Because he describes that again in Galatians chapter 4, you know, talking about putting our they were wanting to put themselves back underneath the yoke of the law because of uh, Jews that were coming in trying to bring them back underneath the yoke of the law to be circumcised and to observe Sabbath days and the new moons and all these the feasts of the Jews according to the old covenant which the writer of Hebrews is like these are a type and a shadow as he says in Romans 2.20, the law having a, a form of the knowledge and of the truth that is in Jesus, you know. So, I mean, we've got to understand our liberty from the law is our liberty from sin. It's like the lame man by the pool of Bethesda. I mean, it's a perfect example. Jesus healed him on the Sabbath day. 38 years oppressed by the devil with this infirmity to where he could not walk. And every time some, every time the angel of the Lord came down and troubled the water in the pool, it said someone, as he was going, someone else went in before him. And Jesus said, pick up your bed and walk. And the man obeyed him from his heart. 
he didn't have the ability to do that without believing the words of Jesus. Because if, if he had been mindful to be obedient to the righteousness of the law, then he wouldn't have. But he picks up his bed and he's walking. Jesus conveying himself away in the crowd. There being a sheep gate, there was a large multitude there. It says that Jesus found him later. And no doubt he had succumbed to the Jews and said, Hey, look, it's not lawful for you to carry your bed on the Sabbath day. He said, well, the same that healed me said, pick up your bed and walk. And they said, well, who is it that said that? And he didn't know because he'd already conveyed himself away. Jesus finding him later in the temple, no doubt that that's where he was when he succumbed to them to observe the righteousness by the law, which Paul says in Philippians 3 is his own righteousness and not the righteousness which is through the faith of Christ. Jesus said, look, you're made whole. Go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. He was freed from that spirit of infirmity, that oppression of the devil once again. And he says that he immediately went and found those Jews and told them it was Jesus that, that healed him. I mean, so we got to understand that Jesus is that prophet like unto Moses that Jehovah sent. And we need to understand that putting ourselves back underneath any part of the yoke of that law is to put ourselves back underneath the weak and better the elements of the world. And, and as Jesus told the lame man, he said, go and sin no more. As, as, Paul, as the apostle John said, if, any, if, if anyone transgresses and abides not in this doctrine, do not receive them into house and don't give them your greeting, meaning don't give them your peace. For he that gives him his peace is a partaker of his evil deeds. I mean, you read uh, first or Second Corinthians chapter 11, we got Jews trying to come in there and bring the assembly at Corinth back underneath the yoke of the law. He calls them the, yoke, the, the uh, ministers of Satan and comparing them to Satan who is able to transform himself into an angel of light. You know, we need to understand that that old covenant law has passed away. And if we try to at any point put ourselves back underneath that, we put ourselves back underneath the ministration of death and condemnation as Paul describes it in 2 Corinthians 3. That I might by all means attain unto the resurrection of the dead, being found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is after the law or by the law, but that which is through the faith of Jesus Christ. The righteousness which is through the faith of Jesus Christ. We enter into that in baptism in the name of Jesus, putting our flesh to death. As he says in Romans 8.10, If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but our spirit is alive because of righteousness. Amen.